What's in the box? Thomas here with Much Profs, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am definitely building something simple. And yes, I am sticking to my game plan going into this because I literally have just two days to kind of knock this build out and get it edited. So I was looking through my stuff and realized that it's been a while since I've done something using the scale mail from Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan over at Foam Armory. Uh, I got some nice packs of it in my foam stash and thought I would put them to good use. A while back, I tried to make a box for a tune gun that I built and I bought one at Hobby Lobby that was a little bit too small. So I thought, why not just kind of decorate the outside of that box, maybe using some scale mail and uh, make it into something a little more interesting than a cheap seven or eight dollar wooden box. So today we're gonna build a box. I, I don't know. Let's get to building. Hobby Lobby and a lot of craft stores have these very cheaply made boxes in their woodworking section that I often find myself staring at thinking about potential build bases. I got this one half off so I think it was around seven dollars when I purchased it. I removed the stickers handle and the front clasp from the case. I'm not gonna need them. My game plan is to cover it with foam and add decorative layers on top of that. The only thing that I'm leaving on is the hinges. With it all off I lay on some contact cement to both the wood and the four millimeter EVA foam and cover the outside surfaces. Once I had it all glued on, I beveled all the edges with a rotary tool and cut some one inch strips of the same four millimeter foam to add some decorative borders around the top sides and bottom of my box. I mark off the strips where I'm going to glue them and slather on more contact cement to both pieces. This helps me to conserve my glue and give me some guidelines to help me line strips up. I make multiple layers this same way to add extra details and and hopefully make it interesting on these big flat surfaces. Thank you. 
This is foam scale mail made by Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan over at Foam Armory. I'll put a link to their website where you can get yourself some of this awesome product. The scale comes in pre-cut sheets that you simply have to push out the perforations. I wanted to leave this part in the video so that you could see I make mistakes from time to time. Initially I thought I was just going to cut the rings off and glue it down strip by strip. After about three of them I realized that the alignment would be off the higher up I went so I ended up ripping them out and trying a different approach. Failure is not the end of a project. It's part of the process and it's how I continue to learn and get better at what I do. Take two, I'm going to weave the strips like they are intended to be done. Time to push out little dots and separate out the, the two types of strips. One the loops align in the middle of the scale and the other kind the loop is in between the scale. Let me slow down to regular speed for you real quick. Uh, there you go. Not that you can see what I'm doing because my giant hands are getting in the way, but at least you can see how fast I'm actually moving and get a concept for how simple it really is. Fold a circle in half and push it through another row of scale. Once the strip is complete, grab the next one and push it through. My suggestion is to put on a show or an audiobook and just kind of zone out as you weave your way till you get the size sheet that you need. I did heat form this for a second to get the scale to lay down flat, then I super glued the top row down to lock it all into place and cut off the top loops of my circles. With more contact cement on my box and the back of my scale mail, I tacked the two parts together. I line up the end points on both sides, then go back and push down the middle after. Once this panel was done, all I have to do now is four more smaller panels for the side. Hooray! More weaving. It's not that bad, it's just very tedious and a bit time consuming. I looked at a bunch of different ideas for blank panels in between the scale mail and really wanted to use my laser cutter. We are currently doing some major house repairs right now and my build room equipment is stored in another room at this moment so instead of giving my Glowforge a go I pulled out some cake decoration molds I got on Amazon, some random dragon metal bits I bought for a project a long time ago and began filling spots. The molds got filled with hot glue and left to cool. The metal dragons were super glued on as well as some of those scale mail dots I poked out earlier. They make for pretty good rivets.
kind of felt like the smaller ridges around the scale mill needed to have some rivets to imply how these parts were held on to the box. To add the smaller rivets, I pulled the cutting wheel off of an attachment on my rotary tool and used it to burrow in the holes. You could open them up a little bit more with a quick hit of heat from a heat gun or just wiggle the bit around a little bit once you burrowed it in all the way. Normally this is the part where I tell you to hit it with two coats of Plasti Dip, but I have a few reasons here for the switch. One, it was too cold outside and I didn't want to have to bring it back into the house to smell up the living area. Two, I wanted to add a little bit of texture over the whole box, so there's that reason. Uh, three, there are multiple material surfaces, some of which Plasti Dip doesn't adhere well to. And last, there are some gaps in the foam and and on the hot glue bits where it meets the foam that Mod Podge would fill for me a lot easier. Just slather a couple of layers on and let it dry. To unify all the colors and give me a solid base layer to do my paint job off of, I hit the entire box with one layer of acrylic paint, really pushing it down into the cracks to hide the light foam and semi-transparent hot glue layers. For a majority of the box, I wanted to make it look like aged metal. I start the process by dry brushing on some silver rub and buff. It is a super simple technique that immediately kicks up all the detail bits on my piece up a notch. Gently and sporadically hit the high points with a chip brush and watch the parts start to develop depth from the areas your brush can't reach. And if you mess up, you can always paint it black and do it again. For my scale mail, I wanted to paint them a nice metallic blue. With a little more purpose, control, and heavier layer of paint, I steady my hand, pick up a nicer brush, and do my best to just hit the scales in my panels. I ended up doing two layers of the paint to get a nice even coat. Thank you. 
And of course, in much props fashion, I have to dirty this thing up a bit. I put down some black and brown acrylic paint onto my palette, add a little water to my brush, and push the wash down into all the cracks and crevices of my build. The paint will seep into those areas and pull up. With a paper towel, I wipe off a majority of the high points, adding to the contrast of the parts. This simulates years of dirt and grime that the box has seen and gives a much more lived-in realistic look, which I kind of like with most of my props and builds. You may have wondered by this point, what is your game plan for the inside of this box? There were several options that I went through before I settled on my process. You could cover it in fabric, paint it, gild it, flock it, add teeth and mouth anatomy to make a mimic, build dividers, or even just seal it up to keep the raw wood color. I recently used some blue leather dye on a kunai project and love the stain I got on the wood pieces. So I'm going to use that same blue Angelus leather paint again to coat the inside. I glove up my hand to prevent people from thinking I strangled a smurf or robbed a bank and lay down an even layer all around the inside. Once dry, I heat it with a clear coat poly spray and call this box done. are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely something that could easily store something nice or something uh, ordinary. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it just has to fit within this. But yeah, took me about a day and a half all together in total, putting it together, waiting on stuff to dry. It did get cold, so I had to do a lot of stuff inside and do it in a little bit slower process. But yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn some cheap find into something a little bit more interesting and epic. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Um, you asked earlier what was in the box. You're in the box. Don't you go ahead and get in there. So again. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.